Hi and welcome to this tutorial. We've been looking at Spring JDBC support. We've written a DAO class using JDBC and we're trying to see how we can use Spring to make things simple. So the first thing that we did, what we did in the previous tutorial was to take all the connection parameters out from the class and put it into an XML file. So the XML file contained the connection parameters as configuration for a bean. So I had a data source bean that had all these connection parameters as properties of the bean. And uh, we let Spring initialize this bean with all the properties set. And uh, in our DAO, we had uh, used a method of that bean to get the connection. So that's the first improvement we've done. Now let's look at the rest of the code from here on. So what are we doing here? We are taking a prepared statement. We are giving it a query. And then we are fill, you know, filling the parameters. Then we are executing the query, getting the result set, and then we are parsing the result set and then closing the connections and of course, handling the error conditions. So the part where the query is actually formed over here, this is something that will change from method to method. So in this case, I'm doing a get circle and I'm passing an ID. So the query that I need to run is select from the circle table where ID is the ID that is passed. Now, if the method that I'm trying to do is something different, maybe I need to pull data up from a different table or I'll have to get some other uh, set of columns or have a different where clause. So the query here is bound to change. It could be different depending on the method itself. But then after that, the result set, which is got by executing the query, this is common across all DAO methods. And then looping through the result set, of course, getting the model itself will change depending on what the object is that we are trying to retrieve. But then looping through that and getting that is, the, the function is the same, but the model and the column names could be different from method to method. And then how about this? rs.close, ps.close, this has to happen in all DAO methods. Return could differ, and all the exceptions could be the same. So what we are looking here is one line of code here, getting the connection, which is same for all the methods of your, you know, all the DAOs. The, there are particular sections over here which are different, like the query and the column names and things like that. And then there is the rest of the code, which will again be the same irrespective of what DAO method you're looking at. So the, the idea is to take all these common pieces of code out and then have a separate class that takes care of it. So it could be like, you know, have a, say before query execution, which I have a method here that prepares the connection and things like that. And then I have the query over here, and then I can, I can have one more method here saying after query execution. Well, this is, this is kind of a, a rough picture, but I think you get the idea. He ha you have a method that takes care of all the pre-query stuff, then you pass in the query, and then you have a method that takes care of the post-query stuff. Now, this is the idea that's central to a class called JDBC template. Now, JDBC template is a class that's provided by Spring that does just this. It has code for the pre-execution and it has code for the post-execution. And of course, as I said, there are certain points during the execution where you would want to customize it, like passing in a different query or parsing the result set and formulating your own model object. So for those cases alone, your code will actually have the you know the lines of code to perform those actions and the rest of the actions will actually be not in this method but in the JDBC template. So let me just undo this. Once we uh, have a look at the code, it'll probably make a bit more sense. So the JDBC template is in, let's open the JDBC jar. So it's in the core package and you have a class here JDBC template, this is the one. So this is the one that we need to include as a member variable in our DAO. So let me just do that first. I'll have a private JDBC template. OK, 
Okay, now I will import JDBC template from the same package that we saw. Now I will generate the getters and setters for this. Okay, so a JDBC template needs to have an instance. I could use the Spring XML, but for now, what I'll do is I'll just use the new. We'll leave this as a new JDBC template over here for now, but uh, we'll change this later. We'll revisit this and we'll look at where is, uh, where is exactly the best place to initialize this JDBC template. But for now, I'm creating a new JDBC template while I'm declaring this. So this is this is an instance of the JDBC template and this is a template class that will take care of all the pre and post execution code. So once we use this, we do not need to do a lot of the stuff that we're doing over here. So let's say I write a new method over here. Now we have a get circle which takes in an ID. Now let's say I write a method here which returns the count say I have a get circle count okay so I have a get circle count that gets the total number of records in the circle table so if I would not use the JDBC template what I would do is I would use a lot of code that's similar to this so uh, you know this line of code would be the same here, instead of a get, you know, select star from, I'd probably do a select count of star from circle and there would not be a where clause. And then I would have to do the execute query again and then I would have to get a uh, result sets count and then I would have to close these again. I'll have to catch all these exceptions. So pretty much everything would be the same. So now in this case, what I would do instead is I will use the JDBC template, which will have a lot of the code inside it and we'll look at what exactly is the code that we will actually have to write, which is the, you know, only the code that's going to be in this method, uh, which is not taken care of by the JDBC template. So for getting the count, let's say I have a string SQL equals. Now what would be the SQL to get the count? It would be a select count of star from circle. Okay, so I have a string which has the SQL. Now I will have to execute the SQL and of course I'll have to get the connection and all that stuff. So what I would do is, the first thing is I would get the data source and I would pass it to the JDBC template because in order for the JDBC template to run this query. Now we're going to pass this query to the, to the JDBC template. Now in order for it to run the query, first it needs to know what is the data source that it has to run it against. So we'll do that now. So we'll pass JDBC template dot set. There is a dot set data source. I will pass the data source that we already have. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Now the JDBC template knows for which data source it needs to run this query. Now that this is done, all I need to do is to pass the query and then get the result. So I will do that by using the JDBC template dot. There is a query for int method. Now the query for int method takes in a SQL string. And guess what? This query for int actually returns the value that the SQL is returning. And then since I'm using a query for int, it's going to automatically return me an integer. So any query that returns a number can be passed to this query for int. And then this is going to take care of executing the query and then getting the result and returning that integer. So count star, select of count star, is going to return an integer. I know that because it's a count. So query for int is the method to use. And then I pass in a query that returns me an integer. And then I use that over here. So all I can do is return. And this count is going to get returned by the method. Now you can see how simple this is. You do not have to do any of the get connections. You do not have to do any of the prepared statements, no execute query. 
a no closing of the results yet and the prepared statement no catching exceptions this is all it takes actually i could pass this string in line and then you know it could just be a couple of lines and we'll have a look at how we can reduce this even further but i hope the i hope the advantage of using jdbc template is pretty obvious now it takes care of all the things that are common that you would have to do across DAO methods. And the only thing that changes here being the query, and that is the only thing that you need to pass, and of course, the data source. So it needs to know where to execute the query and what query to execute. And then since you are passing it to an integer method, it's going to return an integer, and then I can just return it directly. So let's test this out by running this, I will come in this out, these two lines of code, and I will use a sysout dao dot get circle count. Since I have only one record, it should return me a value of one. Of course, I'll save this as well. Now if I run this, I should get the output of one, and I do. So this is a very simple way of using JDBC in your DAO if you are already using Spring. So note again that you are not doing anything specific for JDBC. All you're doing is you have a data source and you have a JDBC template. So using these two objects, you pass the data source to the JDBC template and then you pass a query and then you can execute it. So it's as simple as that. Okay, now that we have successfully used the JDBC template, let's look at a couple of things that we'll have to clean up over here. Uh, first is the new, new JDBC template. I told you that we'd get back to this. Now the question is, is this the ideal place to initialize the JDBC template? And then the second question is, is this the ideal place to pass the data source to the JDBC template? Because this JDBC template is a common object that's going to be used by all the methods in this DAO. So say you have 10 other methods in the DAO, all of them are going to use the same JDBC template, and then they're going to get, uh, they're going to call a method of that JDBC template. So this is, uh, you know, this creating a new JDBC template and then assigning a data source to that JDBC template is, uh, is something that needs to happen first in this DAO. So whenever this DAO is initialized, there needs to be a new JDBC template and then a data source should be assigned to that JDBC template. So we need to make sure this happens on initialization. So there are a couple of ways we can do that. The first way is we create a bean definition for the JDBC template. So I could have a bean for the JDBC template and then the property of the bean could be the data source. So I could say property data source is the bean ref, which is a data source over here. So I can pass this data source as a reference, as a property. The second way we can do this is, the data source is already being passed by Spring to the JDBC DAO. So it's gonna, Spring is gonna create a new JDBC DAO and it's gonna pass the data source. And the way it's gonna pass it is by calling the set data source, which is this method over here. Okay, it's gonna use this method to pass in the data source that we've configured. Actually, this is a good place to initialize it. Now here, notice that we are setting this dot data source equals data source, but we are not really using a data source in our class apart from actually passing it to the template. So it's actually the template which needs the data source. We don't really need it. So instead of assigning it to a member variable, what I'll do instead is, This JDBC template equals new JDBC template, and now you can see JDBC template has a constructor that takes in a data source. So I will use that, and I will pass in the data source that Spring is sending us. So I'm going to directly take the data source, and I'm going to give it to the JDBC template. So the JDBC template has the data source, and again, we don't really need the data source over here. So I'll remove this line, we don't need that. So all I need to do is call the corresponding method in my DAO method, but during the initialization itself, 
the JDBC template is pointed to the right data source. It gets created with the right data source. So all I need to do is make sure that the setter is coiled when Spring initializes. So in order to do that, I will take this auto wired and I will add it to the setter instead of annotating the field. That auto wired. So now I know that Spring is going to use the setter to pass the data source to me and that's where I will do the assignment. So let's save and run this. Oh, there you go. It still works fine. So this is a common practice to have the data source setter being used as the place where you pass the data source to the JDBC template. However, note that our previous method over here, the get circle, this will fail now because we are not initializing the data source, but we are still using it. Uh, but the thing is, if your DO methods actually use the JDBC template, they have absolutely no use for the data source. All they need to do is use the JDBC template and the JDBC template takes care of everything else. You just need to pass the query and then it's going to work. Now, a couple of notes about the methods of the JDBC template. We've just looked at one method, which is a query for int. Now, how do I know what method needs to be run over here? The way I know it is, in this case, I'm using a SQL query that returns me a number. The output of this select count star is a number. So in order to pass this query to the JDBC template, I need to use a method that is tailored for running a query that returns a number, which is query for int. Now let's say I was running a query that returned a string. So in that case, query for int would not work. I would have to use a different method. So let's say not string, but let's say I have a query that returns all the records, all the rows of a table or probably one record and all the columns of that record. So in that case, you would either have to return a model object or a list of model objects. So we look at all the options that we have to return all these different data types using the JDBC template in the next tutorial.